Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. Uh, January 18th, year 2022, 2 p.m. Moscow time. We are beginning the panel session for the defense of the thesis by uh, Alexei Karolyov. The thesis is submitted for the academic degree of Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics. Specialization is 119, discrete mathematics and mathematical cybernetics. The topic is mathematical models for, of control for economic systems with a network structure. Under the order issued by the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg State University, Mr. Gnilatov, as of August 24, 2021, Number 8207-1, I, Oleg Malafiev, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Professor of the Department of Modeling of Socioeconomic Systems of St. Petersburg State University, was appointed the Chairman of the Board. They would also approve the members of the Board, mainly Artyom Sidakov, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Professor of the Department of Mathematical Game Theory and Statistical Solutions. St. Petersburg State University. Vladimir Mazalov, Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Director of the Institute of Applied Mathematical Research, Karelian Research Center of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Are the following members of the board are working remotely today. <coughs> Olga Gurbanyova, Doctor of Technical Sciences, Associate Professor of the Department of Applied Mathematics and Programming, Southern Federal University. She hears and sees us. Yes, 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 I do. Alexandra Chertishvili, Doctor of Science in Physics and Mathematics, Chief Researcher at the Trapeznik Institute of Control Problems of the Russian Academy of Sciences, is also online. Yes, I hear you. Tatiana Tatarenko, uh, Tatiana Tatarenko, PhD, Darmstadt Technical University from Germany. She's also online. Yes, I see you and hear you. Konstantin Avrachenkov, PhD. Uh, Andrea Sofia Antipolis from France. Antipolis from France. Do you hear and see us? Yes, everything is okay. And our candidate for the degree, Alexei Karolyov. We also have the thesis um, consultant. Um, who joined us online. That's Gennady Golnitsky, Doctor of Science in Physics and Mathematics, Professor, Head of the Department of Applied Mathematics and Programming of the Southern Federal University. Yes, hello. We have the panel session of the registration board is being recorded and broadcast on the St. Petersburg State University website. Currently, we have an email address posted on the page with live broadcast of the board session, and all listeners can submit their questions to Mr. Karolov online, the questions regarding the thesis or scientific discussion. And thus, all listeners can participate in the discussion. These questions should um, um, deal with the... Uh, um, thesis and uh, they must be related to the presentation and don't forget to give, to give your name and position if you submit a question. The questions that have nothing to do with scientific discussion or the dissertation will not be voiced. Under the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University approved by local normative acts, The session of the dissertation board is valid, providing two-thirds of the appointed board members are present. And the total number is not to be fewer than four people. The dissertation board consists of seven people. Everyone is with us today, including four members of the board who joined us remotely, and we have a multimedia connection with them. Therefore, we have the quorum. And ask the member of the Department of Dissertation Board support to fill out the attendance list. Our session should not last more than three hours. And the agenda is as follows. First comes the Chairman's presentation about the documents submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements. Chairman's replies to questions, if any, the candidate's replies. Again, it's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research. 
20 minutes will be given for that. Questions to the candidate regarding the presentation? Two minutes, uh, then the candidates reply to the questions, five minutes for all, then the reports on the thesis. The board members will be taking the floor in turns to provide their reviews and questions. Uh, ten minutes per speaker. Then the chairman's report on the thesis, also ten minutes. And then the candidates' comments about the reports on the thesis and replies to the questions. Of the open discussion, the speeches of those present at the defense with a brief presentation of their positions or questions or suggestions to the candidate on the topic of the research. And don't forget to state your full name, academic rank and position and place of work in the registration list. And don't forget to introduce yourself when I give you the floor. Then the chairman will ask the question submitted during the broadcast via our website. I would like to draw attention to the fact that the questions that will take more than 10 minutes to read out will not be voiced then. Again, it's replies to the questions, then presentation of the candidates' thesis supervisor, then um, a five-minute discussion before the open belting on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. The discussion of the results of the defense is not broadcast. Then comes open balloting, vote counting, and recording of the results into the pro in the protocol. Then we're going to make a decision on whether to confer the academic degree or not. And finally, we are going to listen to the candidates' closing remarks. Two minutes will be given to that. Any objections? As there are none. Let us start our session. So the chairman's presentation. The thesis by Alexei Karolev for the academic degree of Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, the specialization 010109, discrete mathematics and mathematical cybernetics, is titled Mathematical Model of Control for Economic Systems with a Network Structure. The thesis was approved for the defense by the author of the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg State University, issued May 14, 2021. Number 4873-1. Alexei Karolev has prepared his thesis at HSE University at St. Petersburg State University. And uh, Gennady uh, Ogolnitsky is his consultant. I've already introduced him. 35 published works describe the research findings. There are, 17, there are 17 papers that were published in journals indexed in Web of Science and Scopus, and 11 publications in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science of the Russian Federation. All the documents submitted comply with the requirements and are found in the certification file of the candidate. And curator of the defense, the member of the Department of Dissertation Board Support has all the copies. Distinguished members of the board, any general questions to the candidate for the degree? Is there a need to voice the, the whole list of documents submitted by the candidate for the degree? No questions? Okay. So please, your report, Alexei. Distinguished members of the board, I would like to deliver a presentation on my work, Mathematical Models of Control for Economic Systems with a Network Structure. My academic consultant is the Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics, Professor Gennady Anatolievich Ogolnitsky. The goal of the work is to develop the network games theory, uh, uh, the theory of uh, operational research, of the mathematical theory of optimal management of finding solutions in dynamic network games and the interpretation 
in terms of organization mechanisms. The key goals are given here on the slide. The first chapter is dedicated to mathematical models of control for economic systems. The non-oriented graph network is considered. M is its uh, matrix uh, of adjacency. And we here have the definition of the node and informally the notion of type of node. Uh, uh, it can be explained like that. The node of the network can be colored uh, into several colors so that every node of G color would have a, a number of neighbors of E color. And similarly to that, adjacency uh, matrix can be defined for types. They say that two networks have the same typology if they have the same adjacency matrix for types. On two images here you see the networks. On each network you, uh, of different type. And different architecture, but of the same typology as you see. So here you see the typology of the first image, and that's the typology of the second image. The next theorem gives us invariance of typologies. In network analysis, we use different uh, centrality measures. Existence conditions for some of them were defined in the thesis. And a special case of alpha centrality, alpha gamma centrality, namely, was introduced in the works of Matvienko and Karolov. The next four theorems demonstrate that a genesis matrix for types can be used instead of uh, adjacency matrix. And these theorems also give us that equilibrium can be transplanted between the networks of one typology. Koenig and Bloch formulated such a problem. What are the classes of the network? What are the multiplicities of centrality measures? Can we say that these centrality measures define the same order in a multiplicity of, of nodes of the network. They introduced a, a class of trees, namely the so-called regular, monotonous hierarchies, 
for which five centrality measures listed by them define a single order. However, it turned out that this class is not limited to trees. And the next theorem gives it that for any typology with two types of nodes, there are six theorem centrality measures that set the same order for the multiplicity of uh, network nodes. Then, in the first chapter, we list or rather consider a range of models and in which uh, there is interaction in the network. And essentially, uh, that is uh, the network interaction. Though this word, network, is not uh, mentioned here. And the key results of uh, chapter one are as follows. They are given here on the slide. But the second chapter is dedicated to the game models on networks, where the production and extent with production and knowledge externalities. And we have a network in every node that has an agent of behavior, and the agent corresponds to the Roma model. Investment, investments sum of all the neighbors of the agent in the network is called its pure externality and uh, uh, sum of uh, pure externality and investments of the agent is titled uh, the environment of the agent and the agent decides uh, the optimization problem so that we can define the indirect function of utility. And let us consider a game. The players are the agents, and the investments are their strategies here. And at the point, at the decision making point, the agent believes that the environment is sat exogenously, namely, he does not take into account its change uh, due to the choice of investment. Such an equilibrium is titled uh, Nash equilibrium with externalities. And it basically represents an equilibrium variant. Then two theorems <coughs> define uh, the singularity um, condition for this equilibrium. And uh, that's the note on centrality. Internal equilibrium is given as alpha gamma centrality of the appropriate nodes in case of homogeneous agents. And if they are if they are heterogeneous, the equilibrium is being described in some, like alpha gamma centrality. And the next theorem is the basic instrument 
for or the utility comparison. And it states that the utility is monotonously dependent on the environment or on the derivative of the environment on productivity in this case. Next paragraph. is dedicated to the characterization of agents' behavior in equilibrium. In different terms, in terms of the environment, in pure terms, for externalities, in investment terms, and in productivity terms, we provide a characterization of agents' behavior in the state of equilibrium. And here you see seven um, propositions and uh, four consequences. Next paragraph is dedicated to comparative uh, statics. It gives is given here as eight propositions and eight uh, consequences. Next paragraph is dedicated to the opportunity to transplant other equilibriums between single typology networks. And you see nine propositions that discuss these options. And the key results of the second chapter are given here on the slide. Chapter 3 is dedicated to the dynamics in uh, production and externality networks. In such networks, based on of Jacobinian uh, uh, equilibrium, we define the dynamics first in discrete time and then in continuous time. And we define the notion of st stable equilibrium. And here we list other existence conditions and stability conditions of all the six possible equilibriums in full network with two agent types, and also in and also in quite an obvious way we describe the dynamics that can emerge, or it may not emerge as well, as a result of integration of two networks, or as a result of by regular integration of two regular networks, and also the dynamics in tri-regular tri networks. So here you see the solutions for appropriate differential and difference equations. Overall, uh, there are 21 of them. The next paragraph is dedicated to the dynamics of adjustment in the network game with stochastic parameters. If the agent's stock is seen as a constant, then it's 
productivity can naturally be seen as something that has both determined and minor component. And here you see the dynamics of isolated agent, the dynamics in tired and the dynamics in uh, a triangle. So uh, the <coughs> this solution for appropriate networks with stochastic of stochastic differential equations and quality analysis of solutions is being done here. The key results of chapter three are given on the slide. Chapter four is dedicated to game models of control of opinion in networks. The network is a model to buy an old graph or graph and uh, the basic model is well known and it stems from the Roberts work of year 1976. <coughs> the members of any strong subgroup finally have a unified, stable, final opinion that depends just on the initial opinions of these subgroup members. And the final opinions of satellites represent linear combinations of opinions for strong subgroups. In paragraph one of this chapter, we consider two static goals that respond to independent and cooperative behavior of the players. And we found strategies of uh, the players and final opinions and aggregate um, uh, terminal payoffs in both cases. And uh, the general payoff in independent behavior does not exceed the overall payoff in cooperation. Then this chapter considers the dynamic models in discrete and continuous time. And differential models are being analyzed by induction on the number of game periods and differential models using the equations of Hamilton and Kobe Wellman. The goal of impact is to maximize the sum of opinions of the members of on the network audience for the entire plan period. The impact of position strategy is influences the current opinion of the members of strong subgroups. And we found strategies and wins 
of players and some uh, win, uh, some payoff uh, during independent behavior. And also in the strategy of public maximizer and a general payoff in cooperation. As in discrete time and in continuous time. And in continuous time, it's easier. From the point of view of of um, a terminal payoff com competition is less advantageous. And in two last paragraphs of the chapter, we consider hierarchical games of, of one master, several slaves, and the the goal of impact is to maximize the aggregate opinions of uh, the members of target audience for the entire plan period. And we found optimal strategies for firms and center and maximum guaranteed payoff for the center. The key problem of hierarchical systems is the coordination of interests of different at different levels of control. Most widespread wording of the problem is the comparison of payoff in egoistic behavior of players with a maximum payoff for the center. And we use index of compatibility for the expression of this relation. And our numerator here is uh, the payoff in worst equilibrium in the game of uh, slaves and denominator is the value of global maximum in uh, the payoff of uh, the master. In our model of uh, um, this index equals one, so the interests of players are compatible. In continuous option, it's just the same. And the key result of chapter four are given here on the slides. During the solution of problems of chapter four, we found optimal uh, resource values, both for firms and for the sector overall. From the point of view of resource support, we have four possible cases, and they are described here on the slide. And as for the results of chapter four, they give us uh, this commutative diagram. Here you see the horizontal arrows that demonstrate the distribution of resources between the firms and the vertical ones demonstrate the allocation of resources in time. And this can provide an answer to an interesting question. In what cases 
is cooperate, uh, cooperation is strictly better than competition, and in what cases it is vice versa. All the results combine, and they combine only in case if <clears throat> the nature is all as rational as the public maximizer. If we lack resources, that's just one point of the continuum. So the probability is quite negligible. But if we talk about uh, sufficient resource supply, uh, this will be the case. Um, we'll have a an overlapping. If the farm is provided with resources and the industry overall is provided with resources, then in this case, it turns out that the cooperation payoff will coincide with competition payoff. But then, just if they all have an investment opportunity. And they have sufficient optimal amount of resources. The next chapter is dedicated to the game models of control in phase limitation networks. According to the sustainable development control theorem for active systems developed by Gennady Ugalnitsky. We need the state factor for the control dynamic system to be in a particular area set by the homeostasis conditions for this particular system. And if are these homeostasis requirements are met, and if we take into account and coordinate the interests of all the active agents, then it means that we secured sustainable development. And this idea is implemented in work. So that is the basic model of influence. It is just the same as in Chapter 4. And according to the requirements of sustainable development, the state factor of the control system should be found in some particular area set by the conditions of homeostasis. And initially the problem is was resolved by with the supposition that the um, matrix of influence is stochastic. We found obvious center strategies <coughs> and firm strategies and we also found maximum guaranteed payoff for the center. However, standard supposition in, some, in such model is the left stochastic character of the matrices of influence. However, this left stochastic matrix also has uh, its eigenvalue of 1, and thus we can shift to, uh, to uh, stochastic matrix to the right that will be coupled. And for right stochastic matrix, we can resolve the problem and then make a reverse replacement for variables and get back to the initial goal.
So we act like that. So we get a solution for the initial problem like that. And system compatibility also is secured at uh, the value of one and with it can be given both with and without homeostasis conditions. So we have a coordination of interests here. And in continuous time, uh, it looks a bit simple. And the key results are given here on the slides. And I published more than 50 works on this topic, and the key results were published in 27, or rather 29 already publications. Here they are, 27 of them that were indexed in uh, Higher Registration Commission and in Scopus and in Web of Science. And the results were also reported on major international conferences. And the work was supported by a range of grants. And I beg your pardon for, for uh, throat paralysis that helps me at my lectures, but is uh, uh, really a trouble during reports because I have to make a pause after each word. So thank you so much for attention and for patience. Oh, for your patience. Thank you. That's it. Any questions to the speaker on the report? I have a one. I have a question. In this dynamic part, you see the parallels with automatic games. Uh, did you mention that or not? Unfortunately, I was not familiar with automation games. OK, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, I have one. Yes. Uh, as for the opinion control models in networks, this chapter five, you take into account a situation when the opinion of agents is in some range, such range, and the goal is to leave it in this range. <coughs> of the opinions in this range, but uh, it would allow to maximize the criteria. Did you take into account a situation when initially the opinion of agents was not included into the set range in order to bring it to the range that we need? Thank you for the question. Now, Olga, I did not consider such a situation because initially they were in place in the set range. So we just needed them not to go beyond. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? No. OK. Then I believe I will give the floor for the reviews. And um, I offer to state just uh, some criticisms or questions. Uh, any objections about that? None. OK. So Artem, Professor Sidakov. Hello. I'll shift to my comments, critical comments. I won't dwell upon the comments on editorial part because 
that's the right of the author to express an idea in a way that it was initially um, thought of. So I'm going to concentrate on the model and on the basic results. So in chapter two, when you study theoretical game model with externalities of knowledge based on Roman model, you specifically analyze the equilibrium from the point of view of structure, angular, non-angular, on the, uh, or whether the networks are regular or not. But you don't pay attention to heterogeneity of the model. Though you have this proposition that they may be heterogeneous, but they are heterogeneous in limited way, in relations and separate parameters. But there are other two types, two important parameters that uh, can be similar. The E, uh, the stock of final uh, utility and uh, saturation coefficient A. And uh, believing that these parameters can be similar, the equilibrium, I believe, will be richer, the model will be richer. And it would be nice to understand whether the results can be uh, transferred for this case as well. And also, when you analyze the equilibrium in networks, when you have the transition to the dynamic part in Chapter 3, then the dynamics is limited with uh, by and tri regular networks. So overall, you don't make an attempt to somehow substantiate the networks that you choose. And can we, for example, use this theory for K regular networks? Will it be possible to carry out such an analysis and to get the results that were obtained for uh, uh, by and tri regular networks? Then, When we consider uh, the dynamic of opinion in uh, 4243 section, when you analyze uh, continuous time models in discrete time, I would like to mention that these models are practically identical, excluding discretization of time, whether it's continuous or not. But they are also identical in dynamics. But I beg your pardon. They are different in dynamics equation. In one case, uh, that's linear dynamics, and in another case, there's square root from uh, the control function. So uh, that's a difference that is not obvious. If it's ideally one model, well, you should have this nonlinear change of agent influence or on the opinion of agent. And overall, it uh, hinders the analysis of comparison for models and comparison of solutions. For example, is discreteness important or how can it influence and also chapters four and five of the thesis? What they consider just the same model with different variations. But it should be mentioned that hierarchical models, they are coordinated. At, at the same time, they are not that integrated. So you don't discuss the solution of continuous and discrete model in hierarchical systems. So essentially, mathematically, everything is strict and correct and no questions whatsoever. And the technique is quite advanced. Uh, but I believe you should not be restricted by searching for solutions only. Maybe it should be OK to compare the results. For example, what is the impact of phase restrictions? What will, how the index of coordination CA will change? Why well, I don't remember its uh, abbreviation. And to the phase restriction model. In chapter five, you have these comments of limitation, phase limitation, and they are not added to a Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation. 
so you resolve this problem without limitations and then the actions of agents are not dependent on uh, X uh, asterisk. So it would be nice to understand why uh, this can be done. But overall, uh, but overall, I believe that uh, the work has a lot of academic achievements, and I believe that the thesis complies with with, uh, with the requirements of uh, the order 111181 slash one. And I believe that Mr. Karolov deserves the academic degree of Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics in the specialization given. Yes, thank you so much. The answer is yes. Thank you. Thank you, Artem, for your review. I'll just need to find them. So the first question was about homogeneity. Indeed, you're right that this model would be much richer if we would have introduced different loads and different uh, saturation coefficients. I beg your pardon. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, new horizons open up to work out to work with this model. I believe we can write a lot of new articles on this topic if we consider these differences. And there are no technical problems about it. And as for saturation, we should think about it. But as for stocks, they change practically nothing. And the interpretation becomes much richer. So thank you very much for the comment. And the second question was, about bi and tri regular networks. Yes, there was a, a game on transplantation of not just equilibrium. These networks have homoph are homophilic. They have similar agents of similar type. And if we believe that they are, the conditions are similar, then they behave similarly as well. Therefore, the transition processes are so, uh, of the same type. Therefore, if we want to compute the system and for M, and a regular network is computed as a diet, and triregular network as a triangle. <coughs> and the dynamics is set for the general case and you need, you can define it for any system. Uh, but in this case, you will have to work with matrix and for Allen and for differential or, or difference equations. And you will need to uh, resolve it, but I believe it's, there's not much pleasure in that. And as for triregular uh, problems, they are quite interesting. And certainly you can summarize that all so that you would have a K. Yes, uh, if we talk about general solution. Yes, you can find general solution for K. Describe it. And uh, I believe you can find some regularities there as well, one, two, three, and so on. So you can use just K for K. <clears throat> not to use thousand for thousand with some huge amounts network. That's the second question. The third question was about was about chapter four. Linear nonlinear influence. And here I would I wanted to keep the entire spectrum this uh, a multitude of substitutes. It's nice to summarize, and it was already done in the new article that is not published yet. Certainly, you'd better unify in the end. Whereas in the thesis, I just left it like that, 
uh, as I published it in the article, so that this uh, richness of substitutes would of substitutes would be dem demonstrated. This equalities, inequalities, marketing costs and advertising costs that are included into budgeting restrictions uh, linear, linearly. And in the mastering of dynamics, it's included into P, so um, it's more natural. And the initial model uh, had it vice versa, so they were in, taken to the order of P, uh, that's budget restrictions, so uh, there was not money, but rather some efforts. And in dynamic equations, <coughs> they were taken to the first degree. But it's not actually correct to say that here we have linear and here we have nonlinear models, because uh, the models are defined by functions, and functions are linear like in econometrics, x taken to the degree of n, and the regression is still ongoing, it's linear, because that's regre uh, regress. But in this case, you have a change of or the target function, or maybe it's not changed. Well, a bit, a bit, the change of functionality, depending on the replacement of variables. So you can give V for P, and in this case, double uh, V will be taken to the degree of uh, one better. So they are replaceable, but in order to compare and to draw conclusions, you need to unify them. And in first two paragraphs, this uh, substitution, that's our first substitution, it's not well defined. And in the third chapter, it became more natural. So in order of P, it's better to have a, a control impact in dynamics and in budget restrictions. We may include the linear study. So we can see them as money directly straight away. And we have one continuous and second that is not associated with continuity, that's just the next generation of models. And simple P is taken as one, uh, as a half, and we could, could take one third or two thirds here. Nothing would uh, drastically change here. The conclusions are just the same. <coughs> It should be just concave, yes, concave and monotonous, yes. And as for this asterisk limitations uh, in Hamiltonian Kelby Bellman equation, homeostasis conditions are given here not to take all the phase uh, variables uh, large. That's just a border in the upper part, and you should not take it into account in utility functions because that's not their goal. Because, because that's what principle cares about. Yeah, I beg your pardon, but the choice of uh, low grade players. Uh, influence on x's and x's should be in limitation because and if in the lower level you have some chaos then it's not permissible it's not permissible behavior but in this case Artem that's a different model I believe in the model that uh, I defined the center won't give so many resources so that anyone would go beyond homeostasis. So it's as simple as that. It provides resources in an optimal way until they reach the target value. And then they, uh, the center stops uh, supplying the resources. You can describe it a bit differently as well, so that firms would take care of that themselves. 
But in the sub model, the center takes care of that. <coughs> that is why the functional limitations. So we want to say that if the center gives a volume of resources, then the players of lower level for any of their activities, they will provide access in the necessary uh, uh, range. Yes, they, uh, the center won't give so much that they would go beyond this uh, area. When you draw the function, uh, Hamilton, Hamilton, uh, Bellman, Jacobi. We use limitations and uh, Lagrange multiply method, but that's the limitation for forums uh, because they use what the center provided, no more than that. And if you urge them to meet the conditions of homeostasis, then this will be just a different model. In the set model, and they take care about the income within the margin of resources that they were provided with. And if they were given more than that, they won't take it, they won't invest. And there's some aggregate payoff. Uh, the payoff of the principal will be lower because the resources are unknown. Why should they, uh, the center give these resources? If the re, uh, center is rational, then the payoff equals the aggregate payoff of firms, and it equals the payoff uh, during cooperation. If you have this public maximizer instead of that. Yes, thank you. Are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, I am. Oh. So, Vladimir, you have the floor. Distinguished colleagues, I'm happy to see you all healthy. So why is this work interesting? First and foremost, a lot of techniques were developed in dynamic games and in control games, but this is considered without network structure. But when we introduce a graph, there is <coughs> Uh, complexity because we try to aggregate uh, discrete with uh, continuous. And the goal of network structure, uh, game structure, uh, are different. And in this work, we see a range of interesting results associated with these goals. And most interesting here, to my mind, is the network typology. So this decomposition of graph. Uh, you introduce new type of node. You build a new uh, uh, matrix of adjacency, and here you can compute everything using new adjacency matrix. And it's most efficiently demonstrated in the work for the asterisk. Oh, that's and for the star. Uh, everything is on two by t, but at that you should have conducted some work and to bring this uh, adjacency matrix closer to the new matrix of adjacency. But uh, that's what I like most in this work. Everything else is standard technique. Uh, the goals were already um, met. Then graph games uh, that were considered in Jackson. Jackson's works and Cornor model was also considered as payoff function. So there's a range of works on this topic where a node player plays with neighbors. But he, what's surprising here is that everything is described in detail. The goal is bec uh, becoming quite complicated because you have a lot of angular e equilibrium. So the player can be passive, uh, it can just consume, or can be hyperactive and invests it all into knowledge, or we can have an intermediary option, but there are a lot of angular options, so everything was studied in detail, and it's quite surprising that uh, a person developed it so well. And this goes associated with uh, opinion dynamics, 
Uh, they are also developed quite well, and they are considered in detail as well. And you have this full uh, sorting in cooperative and non-cooperative options in Stackelberg um, options. So overall, I believe the work has a lot of novel developments. It arises a lot of interest for those who are working with management and games theory in networks. And we have detailed um, solutions to many problems. And in chapter one, you provide two different methodological sections, the structure of networks and the mechanism of regulation and economy associated with environmental pollution. I believe you should have divided them or maybe omitted because basically it has, it doesn't have a lot to do with the topic in the second part of the chapter. Then in chapter one types of nodes are defined using algorithms. It is well described in the work, but I believe you should have mentioned the complexity of this procedure as well. Then page 35 in this uh, maximum should have UT rather than U asterisk T. And in chap uh, then in uh, chapter two initial value of resource E is equal for all the players and it does not change in time. And this significantly restricts uh, the application of this approach, but this allows to work it out mathematically. Then page 175, uh, you omitted BI coefficient. Then uh, the definition of K uh, eta as sum and G for neighbors. But the derivative in this case does not comply to the uh, equation of 2, 1, 3. Then in chapter 4, it's uh, we don't see this uh, essence of um, goal function where the player maximizes the difference between final opinions of agents and budget of the firm. The same is true for dynamic setting. I believe you should have described it in detail. Then page 343, you don't give the definition of strong subgroups. You don't uh, say that A is a stochastic matrix. And in the report, you already mentioned that it can. It is not necessarily a stochastic. And the author does not give numerical uh, examples that hinders understanding in competitive and cooperation options. So you say that it's applied in economics, but uh, you don't show direct examples here which would be nice. And overall, this is by Mr. Karolov, titled Mathematical Models of Control for Economic Systems with a Network Structure meet, meets the requirements of the order of the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Mr. Karolov deserves the academic degree of the Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics and Specialization in Discrete Mathematics and Mathematical Cybernetics. <coughs> And articles 9 and 11 of the above mentioned order are not violated. Thank you. Alexei, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. I am going to answer step by step. Yes, yes, certainly. Yes, I believe I should. I'm not sure. Do you agree? Well, depends. It depends. <coughs> First of all, thank you very much, Vladimir, for the valuable comments. So I agree with the first comment completely. It would be nice to differentiate them. But I won't agree with the fact that I should have omitted this uh, last part of chapter, that it has nothing to do with the thesis. Uh, uh, Ivan Ganesic uh, told me to eliminate 
uh, some things that were not related to the topic. Uh, and what was left, I believe, is important for two reasons. First, essentially there's a network there, though it's not titled as network. And the second reason is that our model was derived from this model, Roma model, one of our models of the thesis uh, comes from Robert, uh, Roma and from Lucas. The second question, I fully agree with it as well. Certainly I should have given the uh, assessment of complexity. I guess and taken to the degree of three, taken to the order of three, it can be higher, but O still covers it, so that's an algorithm that is not quite complicated. It's not an exponent. The third remark, yes, I agree with that as well. Maximum for you, not for you with asterisk, the U with asterisk is uh, the maximum. Yes, I beg your pardon for that. And then remark four. Yes, thank you so much for that. I uh, really agree with that, and it opens up new horizons for me. And I believe we can think a lot about it. We can change E or maybe make it a variable. Why should this stock be permanent? Maybe we can change it in time. And then as for the fifth comment, Vladimir, I don't agree with this. The thing is that a B small is a coefficient that ca characterizes the value of the second period, the second period of life. And B large is technological coefficient. And overall, of the t they are included into the target function as a, a, a multiplication sum. Therefore, we uh, call them productivity, A because they both stimulate the agent uh, not to consume a lot initially and to invest more in into human capital. And we have B there, not A. And then the next remark all about the derivative. That's a copy in equilibrium here. When every agent believes that uh, the environment is set exogenously, but in practice it leads us to the fact that we have one introduction of variables that can be used for differentiation, and uh, we should not differentiate according to uh, some other options, seeing it as a constant. That's a standard interpretation. And the genus growth model of Lucas um, is similar here because they will have human capital of representative agent and for external actions. And Lucas introduces two notions, equilibrium pathway and optimal pathway. And the optimal pathway first equals human capital and representative play to external action and then only then there is maximization. And when uh, he cho chooses equilibrium pathway, he optimizes just using representative derivative. And only then equals uh, the result to external action. And in this function, uh, k eta 
uh, is beyond k it and the risk k it that is added or that is integrated into k k large so it is then differentiated by k the that is external and k large is considered as a constant maybe it's not that good because it uh, gives a situation when the notion depends on the form from the point of view of George um, and Fragon certainly they would blame us for that understanding <coughs> but we define it in school we define that at school this function should be fixed and this one should be used to differentiate Yes, strictly saying that's not that good, but still. Yes, I beg your pardon for uh, such a long response. Next remark. Yes, I forgot it already. So this model, Robert's model, the demand is a general good here. The role of the payoffs different uh, by the initial costs. And a free rider firm would be most uh, successful here. But it's not uh, advantageous to be a free rider. It's more advantageous to find a maximum in this concave option and to invest uh, as much not being a free rider. But essentially, the largest uh, payoff is given to the free rider because it invests nothing, but gets an aggregate amount from the efforts of everyone else. Uh, two, two, two minutes per question. Yes, yes, that's it. Yes. As for stochastic matrix, yes, I should have. Yes, yes, I'm satisfied. Yes, yes, Vladimir is satisfied, yes. Yes, I agree with everything else. Thank you so much. Olga, what about you? Yes, we should provide just uh, questions and remarks. I should. I have already given the, uh, the questions and I have no comments whatsoever. So no comments. No need to read. Or should Olga read this last part? Yes. Olga, then read the conclusion. OK, the conclusion. A thesis by Alexei Karolev titled Mathematical Models of Control for Economic Systems where the Network Structure Meets the Requirements of the Order uh, on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Mr. Karolev deserves the academic degree of Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics in Specialization 119, Discrete Mathematics and Mathematical Cybernetics. And articles 9 and 11 of the above mentioned order are not violated. Thank you, Olga. So, Alexander, Alexander Gedevanich, you have the floor. Y yes, yes, I beg your pardon. I forgot to turn on the microphone. I would like to say at once that I work the, like the work a lot. There are various methods that were used, and I believe it demonstrates the uh, high qualification. Uh, Constantine, turn, turn on the camera. And as for the remarks, the, the remarks I follow. In section 4.1, there are two goals competitive, um, um, two um, problem settings competitive and cooperative. Constantine, turn on the camera, please. Yes, please. Turn your camera on. Otherwise, we'll have to announce the technical break. Konstantin, the camera. OK, the first technical break then. So, 
on here? Can I continue?
the end of technical break number one. So, Alexander, please continue. Yes, thank you. So, the problems where you consider cooperation and competition, you make a conclusion on certain cases of preference of uh, competitive choice, which is quite surprising and it requires additional explanation because basically when agents compete, uh, their uh, terminal payoff is uh, smaller than if they are mentioned for if they are mastered by a unified center. If it's not the case, then you should explain it uh, uh, in detail why it can happen like that, because basically it's vice versa. The cooperation our payoff is higher. That's the first remark. Then second remark, in some formulas you have misprints uh, that, for example, oh, like that, for example, the uh, sign of sum is omitted. And the third remark is that you consider the model of opinion mass control and the, uh, the goal of impact is a final opinion and at that the target function offers to some just the opinions of has of strong subgroups and that's counterintuitive from the point of view of practical application because basically all the subjects are consumers customers and so on so essentially um, this marketing service or the subject that provides such services uh, should be of interest, uh, should be interested not just in influencers opinion but in the opinions of others as well. And why in the target function you have this opinion of uh, influencers only, that's not quite clear from the point of view of modeling. But still uh, these drawbacks do not compromise the overall high value of this uh, doc uh, doctoral thesis. And the thesis by Alexander Karolov meets the requirements of the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And I believe that Mr. Karolov deserves the academic degree of Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics and Specialization in Discrete Mathematics and Mathematical Cybernetics. And Articles 9 and 11 of the above mentioned order are not violated. Thank you. So, Alexei, do you agree with all these remarks? Yes? Yes, okay, thank you. But may, may I just... No, you agree with them, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Alexander Gedevanovich, for your review and for valuable remarks. Okay, okay. Then Tatiana Tatarinka. Uh, um, I have several remarks. So it would be nice to see more references to most recent works because oh, there were just several works mentioned up until the year 2021. If you talk about this mastering of opinions in social networks, and uh, it would be nice to see more of such uh, recent works, most recent works, to understand how this work can be uh, considered in the context of or those that already exist. Then some technical remark about the wording of uh, principle of um, Pentragon maximum on page 34. FI functions are not defined, and on page 123, it's unclear how you go to this Hamiltonian for the system. But that's a technical remark, you know. And also, for my particular understanding, what's important here is that the dynamics, there are certain dynamics in articles 3121 for continuous time and uh, 3221. It's unclear why we consider these dynamics 
is there any connection with uh, this gradient method for the choice of equilibrium for Nash uh, to resolve uh, variation uh, inequalities? So it would be nice to see these explanations as well. Then uh, consequence 3412 was unclear for me. Let's shift to infinity, but I've already discussed it with Alexei. So he agreed with this remark as well. And the last point is that conclusion. And the drawing of the index of um, compatibility of interests, it equaled one. Did I get it right that this index and the price of anarchy is just the same? And indeed, I I also support the words of Alexander Gedevanovich was the interpretation of intuition of this obtained result. We got this result due to the consider considered model. Well, is there a wider range of models for which this agent's interest will, interest will be coordinated? But still, I believe that these remarks do not compromise the overall high value of the research and develop theoretical provisions. Therefore, I believe that the thesis uh, deserves um, recognition, and Mr. Karlov deserves the academic degree of Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics in specialization in discrete mathematics and mathematical cybernetics, and Articles 9 and 11 of the above-mentioned order are not violated. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Alexei, do you agree with uh, these remarks? Yes, Alec, but there were questions uh, where she asked to comment. Yes, these are not just comments. Yes, but I agree, but uh, the answer should be different. Yes, uh, it would be nice to listen shortly. Yes, first of all, Tatiana, first of all, thank you so much for the review and for your valuable remarks. I agree with the first remark totally. As for the second remark, Fi is the function component of R from formula 111. Uh, this will clear Hamiltonian. Just missed plus. Yeah, so that's a technical comment. Yes, it's easy to correct it. So it was interesting to uh, to solicit your answer to my third and last question about the dynamics. The third. The so, first of all, dynamics is defined in the definition of motivation. It maximizes its decision, seeing the environment uh, as a component. So this uh, N is fixed, it's exogenously fixed. And this first component is found from this fact. I've described it in uh, this all in uh, on the slide, so may I just flick through the slides, uh, not to read them out. Uh, so it is all described in details on the slides, uh, so that you could read them. Can I make it this way, Tatiana? So I heard nothing. And then I had a similar question, therefore it's really unlucky that I didn't hear the answer. So you asked about the modeling of dynamics in the process. 
of uh, providing the agent. The first of all, we should address uh, the definition without motivation. And in uh, this the definition of motivation, we see the description of the agent that maximizes its utility. You, uh, believing that environment is set exogenously, therefore it's a KN that is included into the environment is set exogenously. Natalia, do you hear the uh, the answer? No, I don't hear it as well. And do you hear us? Константин, do you hear me? Yes, yes, I do right now. So the first question is where the motivation is in this introduced dynamics. The motivation can be derived from Jacobian equilibrium. The agent takes into account the N value of investment uh, and he sees it as exogenously set and it maximizes its utility choosing N plus one value of investment. And uh, this gives us the dynamics. It defines the dynamics. Thus, if in the left end, if it is in the left end of this gap and the derivative is not positive, then it uh, stays there. And if it is in the right end of uh, this gap, then this uh, derivative is not positive, vice versa. So it's clear here, but when we are between this gap, what's the dynamics there? Yes, and we, when we are inside, so that's the equation. Yes, and gradient equals zero, I see. But this transition to a difference equation, maybe I missed something. Because for me, uh, finding equilibrium, to my mind, in discrete time, it is the gradient drop for concave functions and rise in convex functions. And in uninterrupted time, the question is just the same, regardless of what time we consider. If we're in discrete time, so it do trace some mutual influence between the gradient method and difference equation that you resolve. Well, that in this formula, but you have indices here as well, n and n plus 1. So they are here. And in the previous k eta, you have it two times. And in T formula, it is pre-written, yes. So n plus 1 is expressed through n. 
because, because that's the difference equation here. Yes, yes, I got it. So that's the difference equation. And for me, that's yet another standard approach to the computation of equilibrium that's gradient drop. Yes, the second part of the question is I uh, uh, did not answer it. Yes, certainly there is uh, this relation in one article. We already gave it a try instead of resolving different equations. We considered inequality. And overall, we got just the same, just the same, but numerical, yes. So we used the program in an application. So we got equilibrium as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, it's clear. And Roman model. Tatiana, are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, 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 I beg your pardon. Yes, 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 yes it's enough. Yes, I'm full for marks, but she said it's enough. No, no, we won't discuss the fourth one. Well, I can just show some slides, but if she's satisfied, that's okay. okay. Yes, yes, I, uh, you already answered this question on uh, my email, yes. Yes, I agree with everything. Thank you so much. Okay. Konstantin Evgenievich, now you have the floor. Yes, for, first of all, I would like to make two comments, general comments. Uh, that the work is quite impressive with its volume. The volume is quite impressive. So he developed a good variety of models for network games, and you developed numerous important concepts of equilibrium for network games. For example, Nash equilibrium here, Sackelberg equilibrium, and so on. So the volume of work is quite impressive. And I also liked the conclusion on the structure of equilibrium in game described in the second chapter. You naturally got a formula there for the uh, graph centrality. So uh, it was really beautiful. I liked it. And I've seen such a thing for the first time. Because many people ask, and I will say active work on centrality and graphs. So why, they ask, why do you need it? And that's a beautiful example. Uh, here, the centrality and the graph was needed to describe the structure of equilibrium in the network game. So it's really beautiful. Then I have several questions, uh, three of them. The first one is that it would be nice to uh, solicit your opinion on the following classification of centrality measures. What do you think about classification of different centrality measures because there are numerous? Then I have just the same question that was already discussed right now. But I'll word it differently. This uh, sustainability dynamics, it corresponds to best response dynamics. Uh, does it correspond to best response dynamics, best response dynamics uh, and to coalition equilibrium? Can we consider, equ we can consider equilibrium when one uh, actor deviates, but we can consider the definition of equilibrium Quality when the coalition is um, being distorted. And these definitions differ. So it would be nice to learn your opinion about whether it corresponds to coalition equilibrium. And the third remark was discussed in chapter one. That's Lotka Volterra. Um, 
comment, and I learned from this thesis that this equation was for the first time introduced by Kolmogorov. That's really interesting. And this equation is really important because in nature we frequently get some responses to our actions with a delay. Therefore, this delay is very important. But it really complicates the system. So I initially saw it and was surprised that it's really impressive that something was uh, could be done with a delay, but then I saw nothing in the thesis. So it's interesting to learn whether you had a game situation with a delay, whether you have it or not, whether you had it or not, or this, is this just lyrics? Konstantin Evgenievich, thank you first of all for the review. As for the first question, I would say that I use centrality just for our model. Therefore, as for classification, I believe you can classify and define the centralities where you can have this uh, pathways considered through this node. Or maybe it can be associated with this pos position, with this error, with the number of uh, neighbors, or with the vector itself. So that's the answer to the first question. So you can uh, write this answer via email because it would be interesting to discuss it anyway. Maybe, uh, yes, yeah, so we have two minutes per, per speech. Yes, yes, we can move forward. Yes, Konstantin, I'll just first of all read your work that you sent me. And after that, I'll write. Yes, yes, just to save some time. We can discuss it by email. Can you answer the other two questions on cooperation wording of equilibrium and on possible results of a game setting with a delay? As for the equilibrium in the model, it is being defined regardless of its stability. Regardless of how many players deviate. Well, I disagree with that. If there's a coalition that deviates, then it has more power. The coalition of players can harm more if they agree with each other rather than if uh, everyone will act by him or herself, if I get it right. Well, this notion of stability of equilibrium, it's not of paramount importance there if it's one or several. What's important is that it's a short deviation. So do you have one player who deviates or several players as well? Well, if we talk about sustainability, then uh, we should have just small deviations, and that's it, regardless of the number of players. Not sure whether I answered your question or not. Well, once again, we can continue this discussion partially, partially, yes. Okay. Next. So, not couple Terra model. Yes, I agree with you. It's just uh, uh, it was just listed uh, as well as methods that were used. Thank you so much for this wonderful idea. 
because uh, just new horizons open up. I would never, never imagine that even. Thank you so much, Constantine. Yes, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, let's move forward. Now, my review. I'd like to join in to the comments of Vladimir Viktorovich. In the work, you don't give specific examples of the application of models in chapters 2, 3. That's the first remark. It's hard to, you know, understand it straight away. And in models of chapters 1 to 3, agents may have different productivity but have the same uh, stock of initial good. Therefore, uh, the value of um, stock should be different as well. It makes the model more productive, I believe. And these remarks do not compromise the overall high value of uh, the results obtained by the author. And the results make a huge contribution to the game's theory. And the thesis of Alexei Karolov um, about mathematical models of control for economic systems with the network structure meets the requirements of the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Mr. Karolov deserves the academic degree of Doctor of Science in Physics and Mathematics and specialization in discrete mathematics and mathematical cybernetics. In Articles 9 and 11 of the above mentioned order are not violated. <coughs> That's it. Oleg Alexeyevich, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the comments. Okay, and valuable remarks. Yes, okay. Okay, no answers required. Yes, I agree. Okay, the academic supervisor, Gennady. Yeah, distinguished colleagues. Tell, tell us about the candidate for the degree in his work. Yes, distinguished colleagues, first of all, let me thank all the members of the board who decided to participate in the panel session and thanks to Tatiana. I believe it's great that the defense is held in Russian and as for uh, the candidate for the degree, I believe I can say it's just good works and any consultant would envy such uh, uh, an applicant and he is an applied mathematician and he graduated from Leningrad University and then he also graduated from Mac Mathematics Mechanical Faculty of Fulangra State University, and there he defended a PhD thesis in algebra. And current defense is here in his second alma mater. Then he shifted to mathematical economics and to models of mathematical economics and systems of network structure. And the results are described in the first three chapters for a long time. He worked with one of the largest Russian experts on mathematical economy, Professor Matvienko. Unfortunately, several years ago, Vladimir passed away, and uh, Alexei asked me for support, and I offered theoretical um, game models for opinions and networks, and these results were included into chapters four and five. Overall, to my mind, the thesis is a holistic one, and it fully corresponds to uh, to the specialization requirements, and the work is performed at a high mathematical level, and I would like to mention that all the results are analytical ones, which is not, uh, which is uh, a rarity, you know. And there is an application perspective as well, so the work can be seen as an applied one as well. And as a higher station commission expert, I can say that this work complies um, to the requirements, the requirements of the higher station commission, and I believe St. Petersburg State University has the same requirements. So I believe that we should give this uh, degree of Doctor of Sciences to Alexei Vasilievich. Anyone else willing to say anything?
Okay, no one. Then we stop taking questions. Uh, do we have any questions uh, on the procedure of uh, of our session? Maybe the ones associated with remote access. No, none. No one. Okay. Then we won't announce a break. If Okay. So right now it's um, two minutes to. Well, it's two minutes past four p.m. So let us check whether we all hear and see each other. And I raise a question on the award of the academic degree to Alexei Karolyov in specialization 119, discrete mathematics and mathematical cybernetics. <clears throat> I would like to emphasize that voting for the award of the academic degree, each member of the board agrees that Article 11 is of the order is not violated by the candidate. And I would like to quote it. I think the applicant for the academic degree is obliged to cite the author and or the source of the material or individual results borrowed using the results obtained by the applicant personally and or in co-authorship. The applicant for the degree is obliged to note this circumstance in the thesis. And let me remind you that the decision of the dissertation board on conferring the academic degree is positive, provided more than half of the board members, but not fewer than three people voted in favor. That's in conformity with Article 17 on the, of the order. So, uh, Professor Sidakov, I vote for the award of the academic degree. Uh, uh, Professor Mazalov, I support the work as well. Uh, uh, Professor Garpanova, I support as well. Uh, uh, Professor Chodzeshvili, I also support this work. Um, Professor Tatarinko, I support the work as well. Uh, Professor Av Avrachenkov, I support the work as well. And I, uh, Professor Malafiev, also support this work. Uh, so, thus, I would like to mention that out of the seven uh, board members, seven voted for the award of the academic degree, no one voted against it, and no one abstained from the vote. Thus, we make a decision to award the academic degree of Doctor of Sciences in Physics and Mathematics in specialization 0119, Discrete Mathematics and Mathematical Cybernetics, <coughs> to, Professor, uh, to Mr. Karloff is, so we award this degree to Mr. Karloff, and the conclusion. Distinguished colleagues, distinguished members of the board, Gennady, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to, first of all, my academic consultant, Gennady Golnitsky, for problem setting, for his care, for his valuable remarks for his continuous mor moral support when I, at times when I was lost and during all this hard time. So for his uh, 
moral support for his advice. And I would like to sincerely uh, thank uh, the chairman of the board, Professor Malafiev. I would like to thank all the members of the board for the attention and for reading this thesis, for detailed reviews and for their incredibly valuable comments that really opened up new horizons for me without any exaggeration. I would like to thank for your kindness, for the detailed study, because this work is quite a long one, certainly. No, I try to make it short. Uh, due to Levon's comments, and I would like to thank Levon Aganezevich as well and his entire department for being kind to me, for understanding me when they uh, when they withstood my uh, presentation and their preliminary defense. Because, you know, now I speak even better and they listen, had to listen to me when I had really poor voice and they discussed it all and they were so kind to me and then to meet to a person from a different university. So thank them. And I would like to thank my late consultant, Vladimir Dmitrievich. Yes, I beg your pardon for that. Okay, let us, yes. And above all, uh, it is the day of memory of my mother. She would be 104 years old today. And she always taught me mathematics from uh, the early days of life. And certainly I would like to thank her as well. So, dear colleagues, thank you. Uh, uh, for your patience, thank you for uh, patiently listening to my report when I have to pause after every word and in the middle of the word. So thank you, everyone. So we congratulate Prof Professor Carlo. Yes, I close the meeting and turn off the broadcast, please.